boy who was arrested, perp walked, locked up, and then tried for sending a threatening text when he was 10 years old is serving his probation. And tonight we're investigating one of the court ordered requirements. Welcome back. I'm Russ McCaskey. And I'm Taylor Words. And for Nicole Gabe, Daniel Marquez was found guilty in juvenile court, but the judge decided to withhold the conviction as long as the boy completes all the conditions of probation. That includes an appearance before what's called the Neighborhood Accountability Board. The family tells Wink News they don't know what that is or who's on it or how it works. Wink News investigates reporter Celine MacArthur finds out as she continues our exclusive reporting of Daniel's journey through the Lee County jo Juvenile Justice System. What is a school threat and what have I learned from this situation by Daniel Marquez? Daniel Marquez wasted no time checking off a big assignment on his probation to-do list. I told him a joke saying that I scammed a fake friend for a bazillion dollars. This 500-word court-ordered essay isn't due until October, but wanted it off his plate since seventh grade is in session. His father, Derek, maintains Daniel's innocence, but appreciates the value of researching and writing this report. It's an opportunity for Daniel to understand the law especially since since it's what what caused this whole thing to begin. What father and son don't understand is what comes next. The Neighborhood Accountability Board, also known as NAB, was not explained to them at sentencing and not spelled out in Daniel's probation paperwork. I reached out to Youth Services Coordinator Nora Donato Hitchcock to learn more. No response. I went up the chain. Director of Human and Veteran Services Roger Mercado. No response. Lee County Communications Director Betsy Clayton refused to let me talk to any employee involved in the program. Instead, her office sent me this email with a brief description. The Neighborhood Accountability Boards, based on the principles of restorative justice, address the harm that was caused, who was harmed, how they were harmed, and what needs to be done to repair the harm. And they build a case plan outlining the tasks the participating youth will engage in as part of the restorative process. That statement raises more questions than answers, so I keep digging. I discovered the NAB is based on a Florida statute called Neighborhood Restorative Justice. It says the five-member volunteer board is created by the state attorney. Volunteers apply, and then two are appointed by the state attorney, two by the public defender, and one by the chief judge of the circuit. I asked the county for an updated list of the volunteers, 29 names, and no details about their relevant background or who appointed who. According to the statute, Daniel must also, quote, take responsibility for the actions which led to the current accusation, or in Daniel's case, his verdict. That means to complete the probation, he would have to admit he sent a friend an electronic threat to conduct a mass shooting or act of terrorism when he was 10 years old. When I didn't do anything wrong. It was just a joke saying that I scammed someone for a lot of money. Derek says his son's innocence and Sheriff Carmine Marcino's social media campaign are why they didn't accept a plea deal after the arrest and why they're appealing the verdict. If, I, if we would have taken diversion, I feel like it would have justified the perp walk and his name being posted, his birthday being posted, his mugshot being posted. The first NAB meeting with Daniel and his father was scheduled for Saturday, August 19th at this Cape Coral library. When Derek told Youth Services Coordinator Nora Donato Hitchcock he wanted Wink News at the meeting, she sent this text saying, quote, If I see media when I get there, I will not stay, and I'm obligated to report on probation, updates on what is going on with this sanction. Then, 16 hours before that meeting was supposed to take place, Donato Hitchcock canceled without explanation. Derek says he felt threatened. Bring the media and your son's going back to court for somehow violating probation. I don't know. I just felt like there was like they're trying to hide something. If no one's there to witness it, then it's my word against theirs. Donato Hitchcock appeared to share her opinion on this case on social media. We found this August 12th post on her public Facebook page where she identifies herself as a Lee County government employee. It says Thursdays are my favorite day of the week. I work with veterans from the beginning of my day to the end of my day. She writes how she's taking on a case where she will, quote, school this parent on how restorative justice is not a punitive program. And the parent has a lot to learn. There will be no media. There will be no attorney. Derek explains why he believes this post is about them. I told the original person that called me that I wanted the media and the attorney there happened on August 11th. This post 
is dated August 12th and it says yesterday. And I feel that she, with this post, is saying that she has authority over my son and over me to the point where she's gonna teach me a lesson. Fort Myers criminal defense attorney Brian Edwards is not involved in Daniel's case, but I asked him to weigh in. I've never had anybody sentenced essentially to diversion after a trial. He also admits it's concerning that under this statute, the boy can't have a lawyer with him when he goes before the board, especially since the appointed volunteers could be lawyers themselves. He doesn't have anybody to turn to to go, should I do this, should I do that? I'd probably call the bar, to be honest, to say, here's my scenario, what do I do? I think, I think Daniel's the victim, if I'm being completely honest. That's Karen DePasquale with Sunshine State Counseling Center in Fort Myers. She works with children who've been through traumatic experiences. I asked her to sit in during my first sit-down interview with Daniel more than a year ago, and she's been treating him ever since. Daniel and his father gave me permission to speak with her. She describes how Daniel has changed. In summer of 2022, he was your typical child, you know. He liked to play with his Rubik's Cube. He liked playing games. Um, he just, he's a child. And now, after his arrest and perp walk that made national and international headlines, lockup in juvenile detention, months of court appearances, trial, and ultimately condemnation by Judge Carolyn Swift. He was not transparent with the court, and I don't find his testimony very credible. De Pasquale says Daniel suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. And I watch him become basically a former shell of himself. It's almost like he's afraid to talk because he's going to say the wrong thing. Because in my opinion, he's been re-traumatized over and over and over again. This is abuse. No matter whether they want to call it abuse or not, this is emotional abuse. She's concerned about the way Daniel and his father, an Iraqi war veteran with PTSD, are being treated during the probation process. I think things were left vague on purpose because I think they wanted the wiggle room to be able to keep making an example of this child. D. Pasquale says the Neighborhood Accountability Board must be far more transparent, especially when those families request media to bear witness. If this is something good and if this is something that's going to teach a lesson, they should want you there. You know what I mean? They should want you there so that they can see that the justice system does work. It is sad, but to make change, you only need one person to make a difference. And I think that although this is not an ideal situation for any of us, I, f I figured why not start by taking a stand. Donato Hitchcock has not responded to my requests for comment. In the meantime, Daniel's next NAB meeting will be scheduled in her office in this county building, which, unlike the library, doesn't have the same level of public access. Stay tuned to find out what happens next. I'm investigative reporter Celine MacArthur, Wink News.